A long, thin, flat plate is parallel to a 10 meter per second stream of water at 20 degrees Celsius. At what distance from the leading edge will the boundary layer thickness be 2 centimeters? So we recognize that we have developed equations for the boundary layer thickness for laminar and turbulent flow. We're going to be using a delta of 2 centimeters. We can figure out the Reynolds number at our position, and we're solving for x. The real question is, do we use the laminar equation or the turbulent equation? We don't have enough information to determine if the flow is going to be laminar or turbulent at that position, so we're going to have to make a guess and see if we are correct. Let's start by guessing that we have laminar flow. So for laminar flow, our equation is going to be delta over x is equal to 5 divided by Reynolds number to the 1 half power. Delta is known, x is the thing that we're solving for, and the Reynolds number at that position is going to be the Reynolds number where x is our characteristic length. So we're using velocity times length divided by the kinematic viscosity. Alternatively, we could use the dynamic viscosity in the denominator, at which point we would have the density in the numerator. But since we have water at 20 degrees Celsius, it's easiest for us to just use the kinematic viscosity. The kinematic viscosity for water at 20 degrees Celsius is going to come from table A1, where I can see at 20 degrees Celsius that our kinematic viscosity of water is 1.005 times 10 to the negative sixth meters squared per second. 1.005 e to the negative six meters squared per second. That came from table A1. Length here is actually x because we are using Reynolds number where x is the characteristic length. And for that velocity, we are using what's called the free stream velocity, which is the velocity of the flow around the boundary layer. That's 10 meters per second. Remember that inside the boundary layer, we have a lower velocity that increases to the free stream velocity. So it's important to keep track of what the velocity is referring to. So I'll make that substitution symbolically, at which point we have delta over x is equal to 5 divided by velocity to the 1 half power times x to the 1 half power divided by the kinematic viscosity to the 1 half power. Now I can begin to solve for x. Remember that if I'm taking x divided by x to the 1 half power, that's equivalent to taking x to the 1 times x to the negative 1 half power. And x to the a times x to the b is going to be x to the a plus b. Therefore, x to the first times x to the negative one half is equivalent to x to the one minus one half, which is just x to the one half power. So I have delta is equal to five times the kinematic viscosity to the one half power divided by the free stream velocity to the one half power times x to the one half power. Now x is what we're looking for, so we're going to take delta times velocity to the one-half power divided by five times the kinematic viscosity to the one-half power. And we are going to square that entire term in order to yield just x. Since we're looking for x in centimeters, 
I guess I don't ask for a specific unit. Since we're looking for x in a length dimension, we want the inside of these square brackets to be in the length dimension to the 1 half power. That way when I square it, I get just a length dimension quantity. So I have 2 centimeters divided by 5 times 10 meters per second. And then I'm going to take everything to the 1 half power. So 10 to the 1 half times meters to the 1 half times seconds to the 1 half. And then I'm dividing by the kinematic viscosity, which for water at 20 degrees Celsius was 1.005 e to the negative sixth meters squared per second. So it's going to be 1.005 e to the negative six meters squared to the 1 half power, which is just going to be meters to the seconds to the 1 half power. Seconds to the 1 half power is going to cancel seconds to the 1 half power. Meters to the 1 half power and meters and centimeters are going to eventually cancel. Meters to the 1 half power divided by meters is going to yield meters to the negative 1 half power. And then since I have centimeters in the numerator, that's going to eventually yield just a length dimension to the 1 half power, which is what I want. So I will convert centimeters to meters. And then meters cancels meters, leaving me with meters to the 1 half power. Presumably this length is going to be rather small, so I will eventually probably express this in centimeters, but for now, I'm getting meters to the 1 half power inside of the parentheses, which when squared, is going to yield meters as a result. So if I pop up my calculator, I'm going to take 2 times 10 to the 1 half power, divided by 5 times 1.005 e to the negative 6 to the 1 half power times 100 and then I'm taking that entire quantity and squaring it and I get 159.204 and that's going to be in meters. So if I had laminar flow development, it would take until I reached 159.2 meters of length before the boundary layer reached two centimeters. So is that the answer to our question? We have to check first to see if we were actually correct in our laminar assumption. So if we figure out the Reynolds number at this position, and we get a Reynolds number that is less than 5 times 10 to the 5th, then we were correct that it's laminar the whole time, at which point this is our answer. If we find out that somewhere before 159.2 meters it transitioned to turbulent flow, then we're going to have to adapt our analysis to the turbulent correlation for the boundary layer thickness. So we have 10 meters per second divided by 1.005 e to the negative 6 meters squared per second multiplied by 159.204 meters. Seconds cancel seconds, meters and meters cancels meters squared, leaving me with a dimensionless parameter. So I'm going to take 159.204 times 10 divided by 1.005 e to the negative 6 and I get 1.584 times 10 to the 9th. That number is greater than 5e5, therefore turbulent, therefore somewhere before a position of 159.2 meters along this flat plate, the flow transitioned from laminar to turbulent. Therefore, I cannot use the laminar equation for the boundary layer thickness. So this is not actually my answer for the question.
I'm going to have to repeat my analysis using Turbulent Flow. So for Turbulent Flow, I have delta over x is equal to 0 0.16 divided by Reynolds number with respect to x to the 1 7th power. So like I did earlier, I'm going to make the substitution for the Reynolds number symbolically so that I can solve for x. That's going to be velocity to the 1 7th power times x to the 1 7th power divided by the kinematic viscosity to the 1 7th power. And I'm going to have delta times velocity to the 1 7th power divided by 0 0.16 times kinematic viscosity to the 1 7th power is equal to x over x to the 1 7th. So just like earlier, this is going to be x to the first power multiplied by x to the negative 1 7th power, which is equivalent to x to the 1 minus 1 7th power, which is x to the 6 sevenths power, which I'm sure sounds great on the microphone. Lots of sibling sounds. x to the 6 sevenths power. Anyway. Then to solve for x, I'm going to have to take everything on the right to the power of 7 sixths. That's 7 over 6. So delta times velocity to the 1 seventh power divided by 0 0.16 times the kinematic viscosity to the 1 seventh power all raised to the 7 sixths power. And I need to take everything inside of that kinematic viscosity and raise it to the 1 7th power. So that's going to be 1.005 times 10 to the negative 6th to the 1 7th power, seconds to the 1 7th power. And then for meters squared, I'm going to have meters squared times the 1 7th power because x to the a raised to the b is equivalent to x to the a times b. So I'm taking meters to the power of 2 times 1 7th. which is just two sevenths. And then I'm taking that entire quantity and I'm raising it to the power of seven sixths. And in order to make the units cancel, I'm going to have to convert centimeters to meters. So 100 centimeters is one meter. And then I'm left with meters to the 1 7th power times meters to the first power times meters to the negative 2 over 7th power, which is equivalent to meters to the 8 7th power minus 2 7th power, which is meters to the 6 7th power, which when taken to the 7th 6th power is going to yield just meters. So calculator, if you would please, we have two times 10 to the power of one over seven. Neither of those numbers were correct calculator. And then we are dividing by 0 0.16. Yep. Multiplied by 1.005 times 10 to the negative sixth raised to the one seventh power. And then we're raising that entire quantity to the power of seven over six. And I used a subtraction instead of a minus sign, which honestly I should have known by now. So if it transitions to turbulent flow along the way, 
we are going to have forgotten our centimeters to meters conversion. Much more better. Okay, if it transitions from laminar to turbulent along the way, we will end up with a position of 1.296 meters, which is the point at which the boundary layer thickness becomes 2 centimeters. And then again, just for good practice, we can double check that it is indeed turbulent at that position. By taking 10 meters per second, multiplied by 1.2963, divided by 1.005 times 10 to the negative 6 meters squared per second, and we get a Reynolds number of 1.289 E7, which is greater than 5 E5, therefore turbulent. So for flow along this flat plate, the boundary layer will reach 2 centimeters at a position of 1.296 meters.